What are some quick techniques to implement while listening to people you disagree with? Okay, good timing on this one, isn't it? Um, there's a lot happening out there in the world and a lot of people want to disagree on things. So what I would say is, listen, just simply listen. You really want to have an awareness about hearing other people's opinions and also letting it flow right through you. Because they're expressing an opinion doesn't mean you have to put a judgment on it as good, bad, ugly. It's like, oh, that's where they are. And that doesn't need to have a label of smart, dumb, um, educated, uneducated, um, right or wrong. It just is like, oh, and I wonder if I could learn something from their perspective. So we get really curious, really curious, like, oh, gosh, that's so interesting. Um, I'm curious, how, how did you get to that idea, right? And asking more questions about them. But innately, a lot of times what happens is when we're listening to someone that we disagree with, right? Someone that just doesn't have the same viewpoint as us. We immediately start building our own narrative to have a response. And that's where we want to say, Ooh, no, I don't need to have an immediate response. And if they're asking you for an immediate response and you're feeling a bit triggered and you're feeling a bit like, I totally disagree with that. You know, you can take a big breath and say, you know, I'd like to just sit with that for a moment. I hear what you're saying and I do have a different opinion, but I'd like to understand more about what it is that you're thinking and why. And when you do that and you try to understand more about their opinion and their thoughts and why they think it, look, they could go into full selling mode like, I got to convince this person of this, or they could feel heard and they could feel really validated. But either way, if you stay unattached to what they're saying, it's their truth. It doesn't have to be your truth and you don't have to project your truth onto them. Right? So the beauty can be in this space in between where you just allow it to be and you listen with intention to understand their perspective, which doesn't mean you're trying to understand it so you can agree with them. You're trying to understand it so you can know more about them and honor that they have an opinion and that they're coming from a different perspective. Something comes to mind, um, let me see if I can say it in the way that it came out. I, I recently went to Michael Fronti, amazing. I just absolutely love that man. He, his lyrics are incredible. His message is incredible and his ability to get people to interact in the whole place is incredible. And you actually feel, I felt in love with all of the strangers around me by the end of this whole thing. And his phrase was something in, along the lines of, if you knew their story, you'd love them too. You know, really just acknowledging, wow, like if we really, and I'm not saying you can, and I'm not saying you should know everybody's story. We just, it's not feasible. I'm not suggesting that for every single person, but I'm just suggesting that you realize that there are a lot of stories that are behind each and every person. And the more we can come at this with just curiosity and also reflect on, hmm, well, if my opinion is the exact opposite of theirs, what are my stories? How did I get my narrative to be built in this way with my stories and my experiences and my baggage that I've got? And, you know, where are my values and where are my beliefs? And, and are all of those really ultimately true? Is this something I really need to be falling on my sword for? whatever that is, right? And really understanding your own storylines and why someone else's storylines might be triggering you or showing up in your field for you to be witnessing. Because there's something in there. You've asked them on a, on a spirit level, you've asked them to come in and to provide some information for you. And 
for you to be able to have a reaction, for you to be able to have a feeling, for you to be able to have a relationship with them, even if it's a fleeting one. And isn't it always about wanting to see and be seen, hear and be heard, so that we can feel like we're really participating in this human experience and not just being you know, shoved under the rug or told to be quiet or that, that our beliefs are wrong. And just finding more joy and understanding what it is that we believe ourselves and why. And maybe there's some room there. Maybe at the end of a conflict or someone you have a different view with, maybe you'll find that you agree on more than what you disagree on. And wouldn't that be a beautiful thing to leave a conflict, to leave a, a EEE um, conversation with a, wow, we really connect on this. And I think that this is unity. I think that should be our focus as we walk out the door every day is how can I be in union with others as opposed to at odds? How can I find what we share in common more than what we disagree on? So I don't know if this person was specifically speaking about politics and I don't, I don't bring in a lot about politics on this show, but I will say that because we're at such an interesting time with politics, that if you take the approach that I just spoke about, you are going to learn so much about other people, about yourself. And if you shine the light for unity and you come at conversations around unity, as opposed to, I mean, look, we're not at a time where we're cheering for, for you know, a, a sports team here. I think what we're cheering for is humanity and unity. And let's have those discussions. How can we get closer to unity and not be part of this narrative around parties and, yeah, these things are distractions for us. We need to be in the unity consciousness and really be talking about that. And how can we how can we help humanity on an individual community level? What difference can I make right here, right now with my people? And that's where the energy really should be spent. I so appreciate all the questions that you guys submit each week. I love answering them. I love giving insights. And I do encourage you to apply for the Awaken Inner Wisdom membership. But more importantly, perhaps, is if you haven't done the state of the heart assessment, please do. There's a link down below and it's bethbell.me. You can fill out your state of the heart. The assessment will give you very specific results to which stage of the heart you are in. And also some tips, tools, and techniques um, will come your way over time in the emails. and we'll learn more about you and you'll learn more about me and we can support one another in such a beautiful way. Now, if you're also interested in going deeper in some of the concepts that I talk about, uh, there's great stories, transformational storytelling in angels, herpes, and psychedelics. Uh, there's also the awakening, um, and healing handbook, which is filled with a plethora of different tips, tools, techniques, and there's also the psychedelic resource guide. So if you know of someone who may be interested in plant-based medicines, spiritual medicines, uh, and looking for information and insights, it's an incredible guide to help you, uh, the psychedelic resource guide. And also the herpes handbook. So it's obviously about herpes, but it's also about viruses of the mind. So I would highly encourage you, if you know someone or you maybe you meet someone, uh, I know that that handbook will give you lots of information that will be very helpful in navigating how to open up difficult conversations around lots of mind viruses, not just herpes. So please don't hesitate to go check that out on bethbelt.me. All right. I so appreciate you. Please put comments in the, uh, whether you're on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. And if you want something a little more private, you can go to bethbelt dot me slash question and enter your question there. All right. Until next week, Sundays, 11, 11, I'm wishing you much bliss and love on the journey. Namaste.